Hey, Northside, it's Wednesday night, and uh, I'm posting this here. It's almost live. Uh, it's a little bit after 5 p.m., and if you stumble on our YouTube channel here tonight, uh, I wanted you to find something here at 6 o'clock. We closed the office down today, and uh, this is uh, 2020 just continues to prove to be a strange year. Uh, in a normal year, we would have gathered last night with several other Baptist churches in our community for a community Thanksgiving service. And... Um, you know, sadly, um, not a reality this year because of stuff related to the virus and concerns about getting together with other people that we, we don't necessarily know. So uh, tonight, <clears throat> I'm just going to take just the briefest of a few moments to remind you of a couple things going on with the church, some people to pray for, and then just a great scripture passage, hopefully to frame uh, frame up some of the, the things that uh, really need to be on your heart here tomorrow. So um, here's the announcement. <clears throat> Just going quickly, the um, please consider making a gift to the First Responder Challenge. Our On Missions Committee has kindly offered to match whatever we give. And so there's over 800 first responders in Rock Hill proper. And so for 10 bucks, we can buy a decent uh, gift card for a meal for a firefighter, a, a sheriff, um, police officer, and um, our On Missions Committee is going to match whatever people give. So your $10 gift becomes a $20 gift, or your $100 gift becomes a $200 gift. And um, over the course of the year, you know, while we continue to deal with these pandemic issues, we want to make sure that we're thanking uh, people that we are especially uh, grateful for right now. Now, there's a ton of things to pray for. Um, I don't know what's happening, but there's just lots of doctor's appointments coming up and things like that. I will mention we've got several families that kind of extended family are dealing with uh, COVID issues. I know Denny Wise's uh, mom and stepfather are dealing with it and have had it pretty badly. Um, Augusta Bennett's father, um, older, is uh, dealing with that. He's down in um, Athens, Georgia, I think is kind of the area. Denny's folks are down in Texas. Um, but we've got other people that have uh, procedures coming up. Thomasina Cornwell's got a leg procedure coming up early December um, Jim Jordan's got an appointment for uh, some kidney issues uh, that are coming up. Connie Wise has a spine specialist, I think that's right, um, that's, that's coming up. Uh, Karma Given has got some appointments coming up, just trying to figure out what's going on. So, uh, you know, kind of going down the throat, looking around, trying to see with the camera if there's anything that's um, out of normal, you know, in, in what they might be able to uh, kind of figure out, prognose. Um, Hilda's cataract surgery has gotten um, postponed till uh, uh, November 30th, so that's coming up. And then, uh, you know, this week, there's just a lot of people that are traveling. So um, we're not, we're enjoying some downtime and uh, going to try to enjoy that as much as possible. But um, pray for people that are traveling. You know, folks are going to be um, around people that they're not normally. And as a matter of fact, in light of that, uh, this Sunday... Uh, we're scheduled to have Sunday nights at the park. We're not going to do it this week just because of people traveling, the holidays, and potentially people being around people that they're not normally around and not knowing what kind of safety precautions are in place. Uh, certainly don't want to keep people from seeing their family, um, but there, there, there is a little, little more risk factor kind of involved with that. So um, we're canceling SNAP this week, and this is one of those weekends where I would really say this is where the hospitality challenge is really smart. Um, just because we're not gathering at the park as a large group doesn't mean that you couldn't have people into your own home. So um, crank up that bonfire, uh, make some s'mores, uh, pull out a guitar, sing around the fire, you know, do whatever. Um, have people over for board games and hot chocolate. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do. Um, I do want to ask for special prayer for Bob Rogers. Many of you know Bob and his wife, Verna. Verna's the, the hat lady, um, probably a good way to to remember Verna. Verna, uh, just a great spirit for both of them. Uh, Bob Felm broke his leg um, just below the hip about two weeks ago, and he's at the Rock Hill Post Acute Center. And of course, because of the increase in coronavirus stuff, nobody's allowed in or out. Uh, and he's in a terrible amount of pain right now. Um, it's just, it's bad. And, and he's, because he just got moved there from the hospital, he's in isolation which means uh, the only people that he sees are the staff there. Um, it's just, it's bad. And I think the isolation is probably, well, I can't say that. 
I think the isolation would be as difficult as maybe some of the physical issues that he's dealing with. But please pray for them. I know Verna feels powerless to, you know, sit at home and talk on the phone with him. Um, but she can't do anything to really help him through his situation. So uh, we need to pray for, for Bob especially. Um, you know, the prognosis is not good. There's, there's not a lot of time. And, um, you know, uh, this past, I think, Tuesday was their 58th anniversary. And, of course, with him being in the hospital, there's not much of an opportunity to, to celebrate. So, <clears throat> um, remembering the Lord, casting themselves on his care, and uh, they just need encouragement from their brothers and sisters in Christ and need to be lifted up by us. So, I'm going to pray for all of these things. And then we're going to look at a real brief passage of Scripture here tonight. Father, I pray that as we have the opportunity to give thanks, that deep in our hearts we won't just be thankful for the simple things like food and shelter, but we'll be thankful for the spiritual things, that you have made us new men and new women. Uh, you have reformed us in your image. You've, you've helped us to progress in sanctification. You have saved us from our sins. Father, we're so grateful for that. Uh, we pray that uh, during this holiday season, uh, for those that have the opportunity to travel and be with family, Father, number one, we do ask for your travel mercies. We ask that you, secondly, keep them free from illness. And, and, and number three, that you just allow the opportunity with family to be an incredible blessing. Father, we, we pray that for our, all of our families, whether they are traveling or whether their plans are a bit more domestic uh, right now. We pray for all of those that are struggling with COVID, and I'm, I'm thankful that, you know, I, that I'm not aware or I'm just not recalling anybody that's dealing with it right now in our congregation, but it's all over the place, and just pray that you give grace, especially to Augusta's father, to Denny's mom and stepfather, as they are battling this, this disease. There's a whole list of people that have things that are coming up, procedures for Thomasina and for Jim Jordan and for Connie Wise, for Hilda Beaver. And Father, we just need extra grace to, to, to bear up under the weight of some additional stresses. And Father, we do pray and intercede in a very special way for Bob. We ask that you will strengthen him in the way that only you can, that he will, he will know the fellowship of your spirit, that he will be able to persevere through uh, the difficulty that is this um, recovery period from his broken leg. Uh, Father, we know that he, he, he is living on borrowed time as we all are, his is just a bit more pronounced, and we pray that you will encourage him in his spirit to be able to fight off the pain, to recall scripture, to be consoled by your presence. And we pray these same things for Verna, too. Fathers, we, um, we eat our turkey and our sweet potato and whatever else it is we eat tomorrow. May we acknowledge it not as coming from Bilo or from Publix, but it comes from your hand. And we're grateful for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, scripture passage is a short one. It's uh, the 100th Psalm, and uh, I believe it's only five verses. Let me take a peek here. Yeah, five verses. And it's helpfully titled in your Bible, A Psalm for Giving Thanks. Sounds kind of appropriate. <clears throat> so here's what it says. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with, here's that word, thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. And here's the conclusion. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. What a great way to remind us that the Lord is worthy of our worship and our service. And that if there's anything that we should sing about or be excited about or celebrate, it is the goodness of God. It should make our hearts glad. Uh, we're reminded that he is the Lord. Uh, newsflash, uh, even Christians need to be reminded of that. That he is the one who has made us, that we didn't create ourselves. And in a way that's very humbling, even though we are his people, the analogy that he uses is that we are his sheep. Not the smartest animals, but he cares for us. And so again, we're reminded in light of his um, saving us, in light of his creating us, 
in light of his sustaining us and providing, uh, uh, providing for us every step of the way, to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and to give thanks to him, to bless his name, and to remember that in all things, God is truly good. His love endures forever. That's the time period, as long as you can think. And his faithfulness extends to all generations. There's not a single generation of mankind that has ever not experienced the faithfulness of God. And that's a great word as we think about um, how we lead our homes tomorrow, how we lead our, our spouses and our kids, extended family, neighbors, friends, cousins, Uncle Eddie, whoever it is that gathers at your house to remember the goodness of God, even in the midst of a really crazy year. So from the Davis family to yours, we wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. And I pray that you enjoy the time with family and friends. I pray that you are able to get some rest. I know I'm, um, I'm needing that and looking forward to that. And just know that we love you and we look forward to being able to gather with our faith family again this Sunday. God bless you and have a good night.